All right, ladies and gentlemen, time for a brand new episode of Student of the Good Radio. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we have a lot to talk about today. We have a Duracoat finished firearm. We actually have a firearm in the studio that is Duracoat finished. I know you guys have been waiting with bated breath. We'll talk about some new products available from Brownells. Uh, we've got a Student of the Gun homeroom about being dangerous on demand. It's all fun and games until... The bear eats your face off. That's right. And a California woman was beheaded uh, in the middle of the day as her neighbors watched over the weekend. There's so many lessons to be learned from this. So many lessons. So we're going to do all that uh, this morning, today, uh, uh, right after Zach plays the music. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right, you. Uh, we're looking at a picture of a bunch, of, huh? What am I looking at? You're looking at um, soldiers. That you're actually looking at uh, Marines who are holding BAR trainers. See, back in the old days, before PowerPoint and before projectors and so on and so forth, in the military, what they did was they created, they manufactured. Uh, uh giant life-size looking guns so you could see the things so the when the instructor pieces. was up on the was he was up on the podium there's a hundred guys out there in the audience and he would say this is the gas tube and he would point to the giant oversized gas tube on the bar how do i get one of these you don't <sighs> Uh, we had those in our classrooms at Camp Lejeune, and I, I thought you they can't were live fire them. Right? No, no, they're they're, they're plastic. just trainers, right? Yeah, they're plastic. I want one, uh, and and generally they were cut. They had cutaway sections so you could look inside, and he could, you know, the guy in the back row, he could point, you know, the, or the instructor could point and say, "This is the whatever," and the guy in the back row could see. That was way back before. Um, like I said, PowerPoint and and uh, projectors and so on and so forth. It was way easier for military trainers to be able to do that. It was a, a 3D model, and they were giant. I've seen giant M14s and giant M16s and, and so forth. I always thought they were pretty cool when I was there. I was like, wow, that is, that is, that is badass. So... All right. If you've got questions, we've got answers. If you're watching live in the Discord right now, go ahead and throw those questions in there if you have them. If you have them. If you don't, well, then don't. Just close that hole under your nose and, and listen louder. Pay attention. We've got a Duracoat finished firearm. We said we were going to do a thing, and we did. We did. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So the theme for the, uh, well, for the month of September so far has been baby poop yellow and bush green. That's right. We've been talking about a lot of baby poop and uh, bush green and so forth. And we said, hey, if you, yeah, you right there, you freaks out there in the audience, if you would ha like to have... The official Duracoat Baby Poop Yellow and the official Duracoat Bush Green. So you can do a traditional Bush War Rhodesian pattern on your gun. Well, what you need to do is send a very nice, polite note to the folks at Duracoat. And you can do that by going to their website and clicking Contact Us. And then there's a little thing at the bottom that says Send a Note. You put your name, your email address, and you put a little message and say, yes, I would like to buy 
official baby poop yellow and bush green so I can do a really cool project. So uh, we showed you guys last week, we actually showed you the cans that we had in our hand. I had a baby poop yellow and a bush green. And I admitted to you guys that it had been so freaking redonkulously hot here that I did not want to go out in the garage or the workshop and sweat my proverbial gonads off. Um, but we got a break this weekend. Yes, it was only in the in the low 80s. Uh, it was nice. So I did it. I went ahead and I used the true strip, which we also call cinnamon. Cinnamon. And I used the no sand to prep it. And you've got... Yeah, look at that, buddy. And I did this. Let's see. So what I did was I this is the Armed. This is the ARMED, the, the Armalite Rifle Minimum Effective Dose that we've been talking about for a while now. We've been talking about this for about a month. And uh, so I told you guys that I was going to do it. Ooh, that's going to make some people nervous. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, people just got nervous. All right, so there we go. This is the the Rhodesian baby poop bush green striped pattern. Yes. And like I said before, it doesn't have to be specific. It didn't have to be done a certain way. The stripes don't have to be a certain width or air, a certain angle or anything. You just do it however you want it. You guys have ever looked at any of the Rhodesian uh whether they're the G3s or the FALs or the R1s or whatever, you'll see that they did this. So this was done with the official Duracoat, the baby poop yellow, and the bush green. So, And I also did, I did this gun, and I did the Mossberg 590 Sierra. Now, I don't have the 590 Sierra. We'll save that for next week. Uh but I think it came out pretty well. Uh, we posted pictures on our socialist media of that gun, of the ARMED, uh, done up in the Bush War traditional. So if you'd like to uh, follow us on socialist media, if that's your bag, man, uh, then you can uh, go and check those out. But uh, yeah, I did a thing. I think it came out pretty good. Um, you might not, but I don't really care what you think. <laughs> So cat in the hat, and that be that, Buster Rhyme. If that is something that you'd be interested in, go to, you can follow the link in the show notes, uh, and you can go to the contact us, send them a little note, say, baby poop yellow, I would like to buy that from you, please sell it to me, and uh, there we go, there you go. So thank you to our good friends at Duracoat for hooking me up and giving me the the only, I, 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 we got to save those because it's kind of like slightly darker black. Oh, yeah, I got sure. the the first ever can of baby poop yellow from Durica, the first one ever. So there's that. <laughs> what do you think? You like it? You don't like it? I don't know. Hmm. All right. All right. All right. Yes, indeed. SDS Imports. SDS Imports, the people who give you guns and stuff and, and junk. <laughs> the uh, title sponsors of the show, SDS Imports, they have the Takarov shotguns, the TSOS pistols, they've got semi-auto gas guns, they've got pump guns, they've got all kinds of stuff. They have the, the X, ooh, they give a picture of it here, Jared. It's the X-Ray. Look at that. They have the TSOS D10 X-Ray. That's right. X for 10, Roman numeral 10. I like it. If you want to be the first kid on your block to have a 10 millimeter 1911 auto, you can uh, pick one up from SDS Imports for less than a grand. That's right. Less than a grand. And uh, also, this gun right here, the, uh, the Kalashnikov style 12 gauge from them, it's, it's it's pretty badass. I'm gonna go ahead and say it's pretty badass. Uh, wouldn't you say you shot it? It's yes, pretty, it's pretty badass. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, and it's escaping me. Is the TP12? Is the AP12? Is it the the PR12? What what P12? Day TP12. I don't know what you're looking for. 
the name of the the shotgun. Is it the, the, is it the AP twelve? I think so. Anyway, I reviewed it, and it's a, it's a good gun. It's a solid gun. Moving on, moving on up, Juxi.com, J-U-X-X-I. If you have not gone to J-U-X-X-I.com and followed us, uh, well, shame on you. It's the VP12, Victor Papa 12. If you have not gone to J-U-X-X-I.com. VP12. Yep, Victor Papa 12, VP12, not AP, VP. Yes. Uh, you're wrong. It doesn't cost you nothing. It don't cost you nothing. Have beer. It don't cost you nothing. Who said that? I don't know. You just now? No. Who, who said have beer? Don't cost nothing. You did just now. Oh, uh, John Belushi in Animal House said have a beer. Don't cost nothing. Yes. Dearly departed friend, John Belushi. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So uh, go to JUXXI.com. It is a video platform that is uh, designed, run, and operated by Pro 1A and Pro 2A people. It is not reliant upon YouTube or Google, so you don't have to worry about YouTube or Google getting a hair up their butt and deleting all your videos because they don't like gun people because gun people are mean. Uh, If you go to juxi.com, sign up right now, follow us. If you're not doing that, you're wrong. Stop being wrong. You don't want to be wrong, right? You want to be. Nobody wants to be wrong. Nobody wants to be wrong. You want to be right. So do that. And uh, enjoy all the wonderful goodness that is the Student of the Gun channel. There you go. And last week, what Jared did for you is he created a course. It is the Real Men Wear Shorts course. uh, And all of the Real Men Wear Shorts videos are there. And you can educate yourself. Because the professor has given you a firearms history education there. uh, And you're welcome. You are welcome. So there's that. All right. One thing that I thought was interesting was when we were uh, out in the garage yesterday and I mentioned that the the Vietnam era gear was sitting on your desk and you said, you know, that's the stuff I carried in Desert Storm. And I was like, they didn't change gear for from Vietnam to Desert Storm. But it was, why? It was the same stuff. Now, to be fair, money. To be fair, uh, to be fair, they they modified it a little bit. For instance, uh, the old stuff was made out of canvas. It was made out of brushed or uh, like waxed canvas or whatever, uh, and they they started changing the material from canvas to nylon because why? Two reasons. Nylon was easier. To- to produce in lighter it's lighter and it's water resistant it's naturally water resistant um so because the canvas gear the stuff that's made out of canvas would when it got wet it would it would retain water like crazy once it got wet um and it, and it took forever to dry mm-hmm. and it was also heavier ah. so what they did is they they kept the same style like that, the uh, the butt packs and um, the, but then instead of making them out of uh, the the canvas material or the cotton wax canvas, whatever it was, yeah. um, they made them out of nylon. So, and I think the nylon was a little bit more durable. Uh, I don't know. The jury's probably out on that. Some people are like, oh, bull crap! Nylon's not as durable as the old ones were. Okay, whatever. Uh, but yeah, yeah, the uh, the same people you know. We were like, ah, you don't know what it's like to wear wear that rig. And I was like, yeah, I do, because I wore that rig for four years straight. Matter of fact, when I was in the reserve in 1999 and 2000, I was in the Marine Corps Reserve. We were still wearing the same gear, same flak jackets, same H harnesses or Y harnesses or whatever. So it really wasn't until GWAT that people... That it was not until GWAT. When, when GWAT hit, we were still using Cold War era vietnam style gear has it historically been that way for yep. the military gear yeah like they go oh, 40 50 years with the same stuff and then something happens and more people have to use it and they're like you know we could probably make this better yeah because uh, well and i can tell you what was going on during the cold war during the cold war the pentagon was not at all concerned with ground soldiers they understood they're like yeah we need to have infantry because you know 
uh, we just have to because that's what you do. But their entire focus for the Cold War was nuclear submarines and B-52 bombers and intercontinental ballistic missiles and, you know, aircraft carriers and that multi-billion dollar items. That's how we were going to win the next war. In their minds, in, in the minds of the generals and the admirals and the Pentagon, we were going to win the next war with nukes and with long-range bombers and so on and so forth. The, we weren't going to win the next war with ground troops, with soldiers. So the amount of time and effort and money that they spent on training troops and equipping troops and was like... Pfft. Our annual budget for small arms ammunition was pathetic it was literally pathetic any of you guys that were back in during the cold war you know this you said a few hundred rounds yeah a, a, year a couple hundred person. rounds a year that's ridiculous was the allotment you're like couple hundred rounds I, I do that on a weekend yeah i know i know that you do that but back then they're they're like yeah they don't we're not going to waste a bunch of money having those guys go out and shoot guns just to get them dirty and maybe break them. Then we'll have to replace them. <laughs> You're like, is that really the, the mentality? Yes, that was really the mentality. <laughs> but I digress. It is time to move on now. And now that you've gone to juxxijuxy.com, signed up and you're following Student of the Gun, now that you're doing that, uh, we can move on and uh, you can listen louder. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Yeah, I had the sneeze button pushed there. All right, the Marshall application of the rifle books. If you pre-ordered one, well, they they should be in the system on Wednesday, 9-14-22. Yep. According yep. to the, the printer, the publisher, they were shipped. They are on the way to Zach the Shipping Ogre so that he can touch your package and get it all sent out to you. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, indeed. Yes, do. indeed. And, and just a heads up to everybody, that also means the official end of the Labor Day sale. So if you want to get all three of the books with a pretty good discount, get do that now. Because I figured I'll just run it until we get the books, and then once the books come in, Labor Day sale ends. All so right. they can do that at shopsotg.com? You can do that they at shopsotg.com. Dad, where can they do that? Um, at shopsotg.com? Shopsotg.com is a great place to do that. <laughs> Did you guys know you could do it at shopsotg.com? All right, stop it. Stop it. Stop but it. the commercials say that you have to do it 20 <laughs> Five times because people before, are... Uh, before people want to punch you in the face. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Let's uh, go ahead and hop on over to uh, Brownell's Bullet Points. ba 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 Yes, indeed. All right. So before we get into this, I, I should acknowledge once more that the ARMED project, um, part of the MRA or the ARMED, the ARMED uh, project, came from Brownells. The KE Arms completed lower. Oh yeah, uh, that came from Brownells, and uh, I also I went part shopping on the Brownells website. I got one of their Brownells uh, barrels. The carbine barrel, and I, I got the uh, the muzzle device, the flash hider, the Yankee Hill flash hider from Brownells, and the gas tube from Brownells. And also, uh, Zach, did you put the, uh, the 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 link to the article, the Armed article in the uh, Liberty Letter this week? You did, right? Yeah, I, be I believe that was the headliner, wasn't it? So if you guys have not 
read this week's Liberty Letter, you can and you should. You can go and read that. So that's that's there. That's there for you. Because it's in your email address. Yes. There you go. All right. Let's talk about some new products. If you go over to the new products section on Brownells, you go to their website. They have a website. And then there's a little tab underneath that says new products. And you say, well, I'm interested in that. I'm interested in that. And uh, this is actually something that I think is, it's cosmetic, but it's still cool. So you guys know that a few years ago, uh, uh, what you call it, Century Arms International, Century International Arms, uh, I don't even know if they use that anymore, but they came out with a 9 millimeter Kalashnikov pistol, and it was fed with Glock magazines, right? Glock 19, 17, the Glock 18, the big 31 rounders, and so on and so forth, right? And we, we did a couple of uh, reviews. We did a bunch of reviews. Worked great. Fantastic. Uh, the, the barrel is threaded. It was half by 28 threading, so you could put uh, a can on it. Uh, worked fantastically well. But you know how Americans are, Jared? I'll they, tell you how Americans like are. They like to have their cake and eat it, too. Yeah, Americans, are they're focused on image and looks, right? So Americans said, yeah, but I don't like the way the it's an AK, so the mag should should swoop forward. It shouldn't go straight down. I don't like the way that looks. And they went, you people. So I, all right, fine. So somebody, a smart engineer said, well, what magazines are available that swoop, right? Swoop. That swoop forward. And we don't have we don't have to worry about redesigning a new magazine. Because if you're making if you're building a gun, the last thing you want to have to do is come out with proprietary magazines it unless looks like you, the snake unless, gun magazine. It's like what? The snake gun magazine. Oh yeah, it looks like a Sten magazine. Well, you know what it is? It's a scorpion magazine. Ah. So I knew it looked familiar. So who, which company is now making aftermarket scorpion mags? Magpul. So Magpul is making 35 round aftermarket scorpion magazines. Ladies and gentlemen, do I need to tell you how what a cool thing that is? And they also make a drum. They make a 50 round drum. So this is the Draco 9S, 9mm uh, AK pistol. It's $739 from our bros at, uh, at Brownells. So and if you're following along right now, you can go to student of right the gun. Right now. Studentofthegun.com slash Brownells. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then once you're at that site, you can scroll down and hit the new products button. Or you can just use the search bar if you know exactly yeah. what you're looking for. And then you scroll down through the new products, and boom, there it is, second row. Right meow, there it is. So, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. And, and of course, uh, if you guys know anything about anything, uh, you'll know that these guns are built on uh, Kalashnikov lower receivers or receivers, whatever. Uh, so, you know, the pistol grips are pretty universal. The, the receivers are pretty universal. Um, yeah. I was reading the part number here, mm -hmm. and it's. I thought it said IWB. It says one WB at the end. I thought it said <laughs> IWB. I was like, oh, I mean, I guess maybe if you're motivated. <laughs> no, it's not a, not an inside the waistband gun. But I thought that was really smart. I thought that was a a real sm uh, smart thing to do, uh, because we know that Magpul is cranking out mags in their Cheyenne, Wyoming facility. That's right. That's where Magpul magazines are made in Cheyenne, Wyoming, in free America, not in that scum-sucking state called Colorado, that uh, egg-sucking state of Colorado. Yeah, yeah. If you're in Colorado, you're wrong. You need to fix your state. But uh, there you go. I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, you guys would find it interesting. So that is what's going on at Brownells right now. Right now. 
I mean, there's a lot of other new stuff, but we're not going to spend all day talking about all the new stuff on, on the Brownells website. But uh, that is one thing that is there, and I thought that was interesting. And since this is my show, I decided I would talk about it. Uh, the other new thing, apparently Springfield is trying to steal a bit of uh, STI, I mean, staccato business. They came out with this new thing called the Prodigy, which is looks essentially it looks like basically like the springfield engineers bought a staccato or an sti pistol and reverse engineered it <laughs> that's what it looks like to me but you know I'm, I'm not accusing anybody of anything it, that's just what it looks like it looks like that uh, i don't know what magazines it uses whether it uses proprietary magazines or not but uh, yeah so there's that. There's that. I'm waiting for someone to say, Ooh, Paul, what do you think about the new prodigy? Let's say, I don't think anything of it yet. I don't think anything of it yet. So that is that, Mr. That's that. Moving on. Let's go ahead and, uh, well, I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to let Zach talk for a second. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. All right, it is time for a Student of the Gun Homeroom brought to you by Crossbreed Holsters. We're all about being dangerous on demand. All right, that's Madison Rising, and the song is Dangerous. And yes, is that you song scum dangerous? sucking pigs at YouTube, we do have express written permission to use that song. Uh, dangerous because the student of the gun homeroom from Crossbreed Holsters is all about dangerous on demand, being dangerous on demand. If you'd like to be dangerous on demand and actually carry your freaking gun, wow, what a concept! Carry your freaking gun. Go to crossbreedholsters.com. Shop around. Shop around. Yes. And after you're done shopping around and you're ready to check out, stop. Type in SOTG as the promotional code. And when you do that, you're going to go ahead and save some money. Get a fantastic made in the USA holster from a good company run by good people. And so you're going to be happy, happy, happy all the way around. All right. We got a story here from California. Yes. What's going on in California? Uh, we got two California stories, and we didn't even plan it like this. It just happened. So KOCO Coco News. I'm not sure if they're on your side, local, or what they are. Um. We can play the video. There's there's a woman talking about her experience here, and she's got her, uh, I guess it's her son with her. But, uh, Zach, can you play that? Is that uh, something? Can you, in the CocoNews.com uh, video, will that play? Yeah. yeah, it'll play. I just need to get past the ads and stuff. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So li listen, and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> A berry and a chocolate cake. All right. And body cameras captured the wild scene as Simi Valley police made their way into this home to shoo a bear out. And it ran up into a tree after the homeowner heard some strange sounds coming from her kitchen Sunday morning. So I kind of leaned into the door a little bit of the kitchen and I'm kind of peeking around and I see my kitchen is kind of destroyed. A chocolate cake I made for a barbecue that day. Um, was dumped over. But the mess was only the beginning. The culprit was oh. still there. It looked like somebody in a bear costume. No costume. This was definitely the real deal. He was standing there, he or she, was standing there, turned around, looked at me, and I thought, that is not somebody in a costume. And I flew upstairs, yelled for him, and I said, Scott, 
we have a bear in our house. Her son thought she was making the bear tail up. Scotty I didn't know. believe her at first because we do not have bears in Simi Valley. He had to check for himself. And I slipped down downstairs to see where it was at because it got all quiet. And then I took a peek at it. It was really laying on top of the counter, like a, like how a dog would. And um, it looked at me like, hey, you know, like, hey, what's up, man? And you mind if I just chill here for a bit? I'm like, yeah, just enjoy your time until the cops come. Pictures show some of the damage, scratched up cabinets and a huge mess. It ate and it was looking for food. avocados I had on the counter. It ate the nectarines. It didn't eat the chocolate cake that you made. It ate half of it. <laughs> oh my gosh. It wasted it. Because wow. then the next day it came back into our trash and ate the rest of it. A picture shows the scene of his return, uh. trash around the trash can, and the other half of the cake was gone. So wow. He had unfinished business, yo. Wow. So what there's you say, okay, ha 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 ha. Yeah, it's all fun and games until the bear like decides to eat your face off. Bears, Bears don't do don't that. Do that. They are nice. Animals. Bears don't eat your face off. They don't crush your skull within their. Yeah, actually, they do. Ask the the nice lady who was camping in the uh, in that little town in Montana. What happens? What do you mean? Well, it killed her. Oh. Uh, yeah, this is this is one of those things where people are like, oh, ha, ha, oh, what a funny story. Ha, 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 ha. They say, oh, it came back the next day. Jared, what have we said for literally years? When an animal decides it can and wants to do something, does it ever change its mind and decide, you know what, I'm not going to do that anymore? Not usually, no. 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 Now that the bear has associated they're like well well I i'm waiting for the for the ninnies for the soy fed manginas to say people shouldn't be in the wilderness where bears live and that that wouldn't happen yeah but this is in the middle of a city like simi valley is a large city in california so well people shouldn't have food in their houses yeah i'm waiting for the the hippies the the freaking bambi police well we're, we've advised people if you're gonna have food in your house you need to make sure that all your food is locked up in bear proof containers really is that how that works now and i'm super proud of the of course i i, I guess i can't hold the popo uh, I, I can't hold them responsible because, in you know, if, if this was a a dude, like if this was a crackhead who had busted into the house and the cops show up, and the crackhead was like, blah, 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 they they could have like, well, they whatever you know, arrested him, shot him, done whatever. But with a bear, you see, the popo they're afraid, like if they do anything to hurt the bear. That they'll get in trouble uh, well we're not allowed and i 100 bucks right here on the table that if you interview those cops they would tell you oh in situations like that we're not allowed to do anything we have to call the animal control we have to call the the fishing game and and let them take care of it when i was in flow rida when i lived in flow rida the deputies would tell me that uh, they would get calls all the time. There's an alligator in my pool. There's an alligator in my front lawn. My kids can't go to school because there's an, a six foot alligator. And they'd say, what do you want me to do? You're the police. Come take care of it. And the police like, nope. Nope. We'll get in trouble. If we molest the wild animal, we'll get in trouble. Mm. Like, what are we supposed to do? Called, well, we called Fish and Game, and they said whenever they have time that they might come over. Well, how long is that going to take? I don't know, five, six hours, three hours, four hours, whatever. And it, I took, did I tell you about the one deputy who he got called to the carpet and told, shame on you? Because he got, he got called to a neighborhood, and uh, there was a gator 
wandering around where the kids were like waiting for the bus or something. And uh, the neighbors are like, get rid of it. Make it make it go away. And he's like, nope. Sorry. No, I, I'm not allowed. He goes, I'm it's against the law for me to do anything to that alligator. And so the, the neighbors, they were all they're like, well, you suck. And he said, well, if I lived in this neighborhood and I was upset that the local sheriff's department couldn't do anything, he goes, if if it was me, he goes, I'm, I'm just saying if what I would do is I would call my local congressman and I would and I would complain to them and say, this is not right. And you need to amend the law so that the police can protect us. And so that's what they did. <laughs> so they called their local congressman. And then a rep from the congressman office called the sheriff and said, why are your deputies telling the, the peasants to bother the, the congressman? And so, so the story basically ended up, he's like, he goes, so should I have not told him that? No, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have. He goes, was it wrong? Was it illegal? Was it a violation of policy for me to do that? Technically, no. But the law requires that I answer no. Yeah, the law, re- exactly. <laughs> exactly. The law requires that I answer no. But, <laughs> and I guarantee you, in this situation, the cops that showed up were like, you know, we can't do anything to that bear. We have to, like, shoo it away. And then the bear came right back. No. No. It found food, and then it left, and, and it, it got hungry again. Well, there was no repercussions for its behavior. So the bear's like, oh, I had to climb a tree for a little bit. Big whoop. I'll just go right back. I'll go back tomorrow. So these folks are going to have to get, you know what they're going to have to get, Jaren? Mm. They're going to have to get bear-proof garbage cans. <laughs> I thought you were going to say a restraining order. <laughs> well, that just no, that's the next story. Right into the next story, doesn't it? Holy cow. Segway. I love how the man of the house went down and it's like, Hi, bear. He's laying on the counter like a dog would. And this that's what I was like, you let your dogs lay on your kitchen counters? <laughs> to be fair. You're, some, you're to, some sick, weird people. To be very fair, when a bear isn't actively killing you, they are very cute. <laughs> when they're not in the process, it's like lions. When they're not in the process of eating you, they're, they just look so majestic. Have you ever seen those videos of like the, the people who work at like the wild cat sanctuaries? Like, hello, Juba. And they go out and like pet the lion on the nose and its eyes are all closed and it rolls over and shows her belly and she scratches its mm. belly. They're just big cats. Yeah. I'm right and up to sometimes the time that they decide you. they want to eat you. Exactly. Yeah. But before that, they're just big cats. Oh, yeah. They're just so cute. So, oh, it's all fun and games until the bear's eating your face off. Yeah. So, there we go. All right. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Move on to the main story of the day. Back to California, yay. And this is just a big old suck right here. There's so many lessons learned. It says, California, woman beheaded with sword in broad daylight. Not as regular as daylight. Broad. Broad daylight. Was it a broad sword? Yep. As neighbors watched in horror. Neighbors watched in horror. A woman was beheaded with what is described as a samurai sword. So not a broadsword. In broad daylight. Is it a broadsword in samurai daylight? I don't know. I was about to make the same joke. Ah! In front of her home as neighbors watched in horror. So they're outside. She's having a domestic in the front lawn. The neighbors are watching. Okay. The victim has not been identified. Which is kind of a lie, actually. Because yeah, yes, it is. The, all read, the neighbors know. Uh, yeah, as we read through the story, you'll know. Investigators told NBC Bay Area that Solano has an extensive violent criminal past. Who's Solano? And a history of mental illness, and that the victim had a restraining order against him. So, so we so, they haven't even introduced that yet, and they put it in the yeah in are, the header. Uh, yeah, this is like a 
breaking news thing. They just copied and pasted, I think. Yeah, that's what this it is. This is from uh, NBC Bay Area. It says, a woman's head was severed with a sword in San Carlos on Thursday. Authorities with knowledge of the investigation told NBC Bay Area's investigative unit. The suspect, who returned to the scene, was arrested in connection with the woman's death. The suspect was later identified as Jose Landiedo Solano. So there you go. There's Solano. Yeah. Is the suspect. Deputies near the intersection of Laurel Street and Magnolia Avenue were flagged down at about 11.50 a.m. by witnesses who reported an assault in progress. When deputies arrived at the scene, they found the woman dead. Uh, Chappelle Thorborn, who lives in the neighborhood, told NBC Bay Area Thursday that he, he was in disbelief. He said, quote, it was kind of a shock, you know, this is a nice neighborhood, so it's a shock. End quote. Uh, Thornborn also said that he knew both the victim and Solano. So how could he know the victim and Solano if the victim has not yet been identified? And added that they moved into the neighborhood about three years ago. He said, quote, they seemed like they loved each other, end quote. Hmm. That was an act of love from Solano. I saw somewhere in here that... Did I already read it just now, or did I read it earlier where it's talking about the restraining order? Oh, yeah. It says they had a restraining order against him. So, the victim. So, we, I, where do we start? Where do we start with the lessons learned? Well, we could start lessons learned uh, part one. The victim had a restraining order against the attacker so for literally not figuratively uh the victim is by had been identified as 27 year old karina castro nbc bay area was told she had two children ages seven and one so he has restraining order yeah restraining orders are worthless We've talked about this multiple times, that restraining orders are worthless. It is a piece of paper, and that piece of paper does not protect you from anything. Is a restraining order a good thing to put into the paper trail? <sighs> it's if you if let me understanding that it's not going to protect you, is it still a good thing to get in the event that this woman would have had mm. to do something to defend oh, herself. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, it, what it is, is it's, it's, a, it's a policy statement. The reason that they do that is they, they give put out a restraining order because it's way easier for the system to do that than it is for the system to conduct an investigation, file charges, uh, you know, and all that. So what they do... In, in my... In my young experience how i feel is that a restraining order is one of those things where it's a band-aid that they just assume on will work fine wound. on a bullet hole right yeah. like the concept of a restraining order is fine it's like you're not allowed to be around this person but then they take the restraining order and put it on people who uh, actively want to kill the other person yeah, you mean I'm afraid he's going to kill me yeah. with an extensive violent criminal past exactly. and history of mental illness. Like a restraining yeah. order would be just fine uh, with freaking, I don't know, your freaking for people Billy. that that for would Billy. for for people that are inclined to obey the law, or like somebody who it's like he freaking you know my ex girlfriend slashed my tires. She mm. probably won't come and murder you, but it's enough. If she comes near your house again, then they you can call the cops and just have her taken away. Well, that she's a criminal and she needs to be in jail because that's vandalism. Um, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So restraining orders are like gun control laws. They only work on people that are willing to obey the law. You see, the reason you're getting a restraining order is because the person is not willing to obey the law and they are a bad person who is threatening to harm you. You know what? The restraining orders are the equivalent of 
well, we have to do something. Oh, well, what what should we do? Well, clearly people... We have, we have to do something. Don't even think that anymore because it says here that it happened as neighbors watched in horror. So, yeah, that's part two. Like, so part one of Lessons Learned, restraining orders are a joke. Restraining orders do not keep you safe. All right? We understand this. Should, do, we, do, we, do I need to tell you? Uh, the police. You're like, well, I have a restraining order. And, and, and if, if this person comes, then I'll call the police. And they'll hot foot it right over to my house. When you were a cop, did you ever get a call about somebody breaking a restraining order? Oh, yeah. And then what it, What happened after that? Oh, well, well, there's a lot of things that happened after that. But, you know, one of the things I had a, uh, when I was a, popo, when I was a popo, got called and ladies like, I'm afraid of my ex husband, boyfriend, whatever. I'm like, okay. Why are you afraid of him? Because of this, this, this. I'm like, and she, she shows me, she's like, I have a restraining order against him. Okay, cool. Do you have a gun? No, I don't believe in guns. Okay. Well, here's the deal, chick. I'm not your personal bodyguard. I can't park out in front of your house all day long, every day, night and day, to make sure that your psycho ex-boyfriend doesn't show up and violate the restraining order. Well, that's a police's job. It's the police's job to make sure. No, actually, it's not. That was before it. It was clarified that the police have no special duty to protect you. Well, that individual. Yeah, that wasn't what, what the story I'm talking about. It's not before. Um, but so it's bad enough that restraining orders are a joke. But let's go on. Neighbors stood, watched in horror as the woman. What kind of a worthless piece of human filth are you? to stand there and watch a woman get hacked to death. I, I can't even imagine. Well, 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 yeah. Chappelle Thorn Thorburn, it's like, I was in disbelief. I just stood there. I just stood there and watched and he had a large, uh, somewhere in the story, it says a large cutting instrument or something like that. I saw the words large cutting instrument. Is that like a medical facility? Uh, I don't know. I saw this. I was like, uh. ladies and gentlemen, I, I, of course, this is California. So in California, they have really, what do we know? They have very strict gun control laws. Jared, is it in California, if you feel like you're in fear for your life, you can carry a gun everywhere you go, right? Yes. That would be a no. Remember, in California, you need to go to the state and beg them for permission to carry a gun. Yes. You have to beg them for permission. And then maybe if they're feeling kind and benevolent that day, they might let you do it. They might. So you say this happened. What's the date? Uh, September 8th was the original publication date. So this happened going into the weekend. So this happens going into the weekend. And what do we know? It gets buried on weekend news. People don't pay attention to the news on the weekend. Are they going to do a sword control? <laughs> I don't know. That they might be ne- that might be next. Um, and they they're doing a maybe they'll do a bin the knife program. If you feel like you're a lunatic and you might kill someone, we encourage you to surrender your weapon. Oh, San Mateo County Sheriff's Office Lieutenant Eamon Allen said during the afternoon media briefing it was a large a stabbing instrument of some type was used. Uh, Did he stab her head off? Uh, 
says, but he did not provide further details as the weapon is still outstanding. What? Was it outstanding? Out freaking standing. Oh. Uh, it says, I found another story that says that just hours before the murder, the two exchanged messages and Snapchat that became contentious. Castro threatens to tell the world about Solano's criminal record that includes rape, a rape conviction involving a minor. He calls her snitch lip and warns her to F around and find out. Castro fires back. He says, you want to put a target on my back? Your homie's going to know the real you and threatens to expose his sexual relationship with another man. She adds, dude, go ahead and try to take my a double S out. Just hours later, the attack occurred at 11.50 a.m. on Laurel Street in Magnolia. Hold, hold, hold it. Did you say this was a Snapchat? Yeah, they were talking back and forth with Snapchat. But I thought Snapchat messages disappeared after 10 seconds. Uh, no, you can change no, them. No, they, they, uh, they updated recently where it by default stays for 24 hours. Oh. Well, I guess I'm not up on the I haven't used Snapchat Snapchats. In a long time. When, last time I used Snapchat, they disappeared. Yeah, it's just why you don't use it anymore, because it disappeared. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. And it says, the reason that I opened this to story, because it said, a uh, man who beheaded his ex in front of horrified neighbors is an illegal immigrant with expired visa. Oh, wow! But, but nowhere in the story does it say that. That was just the headline. Oh man! Oh, it just the hits just keep on rolling. So I don't know. So she that's... had a restraining order against him. Uh, he had a an extensive criminal background. Um, dumb question: If he had an extensive criminal background, a why is he not currently in jail? B, uh, and you're like, why well, you just can't put people in jail? Uh, well, okay, you tell me he's not on probation. And if he is he an illegal convicted a rape conviction involving a minor. So And he's twenty seven. Yeah. I mean come on. So Oh wait, she's twenty seven. Okay, well how old is he? I don't know. So did he get time served or what? You know, he got like supervised adult probation for rape involving a minor? This is this is so California. So what we got and uh is we've got a a a recidivist criminal, all right, who should be in jail but isn't because in California we don't put criminals in jail. We put like citizens in jail. That's citizen gun owners, that's who goes to jail in California. Oh, uh, Actual criminals and illegal invaders and yeah, yeah. Now the big question we need to ask ourselves is what what happened here that is going to change? Are we going to change anything? Are we going to fix anything in California? Are they going to amend the? the concealed carry laws to allow this allow to give permission to the peasants nope no we're not are we going to be tougher on criminals when we catch them when we catch rapists are we going to actually put them in jail and make them stay there no we're not going to do that well how about illegal invaders with extensive mental his mental health problems and uh, criminal records are we going to kick them out of the country no we're not going to kick them out of the country we need them to vote democrat are you kidding so basically the lesson here is if you live in california and you are a citizen in california you are a disposable the government, the state, will do nothing to encourage you to be safe, you safe, to allow you to actually just protect yourself. Can you imagine if this woman had a, would have gotten a handgun and just started carrying it? 
she probably would have gotten caught and they'd have thrown her in jail. Oh. That, California people, is this the world you like living in? So this is, I'm going to do a little Dr. Evil here. So that's this is how you like to live your life. Huh? That's how you want to live your life. And the fact that neighbors just stood around and watched it happen, that's so California. I bet you they had their phones out. You know, 100 bucks says that all the neighbors were standing around on their front lawns with their phones out. They had their phones out. Yep. Yep, because that's what we do here in America. That's what we do in California. We see something, and our first instinct is, let me pull up my phone and record this. Maybe I'll get a 1,000 hits on YouTube. That's what you get, right, Zach? 1,000 hits on YouTube? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> you don't get hits on YouTube. Oh. Yeah, so did they follow up on the uh, on the the Canada story yet about the uh, the mass stabbing attacks in in gun free Canada? Well, we're not going to talk about that. That doesn't help push our anti gun agenda, so we're not going to talk about that. Yes, indeed. So a dude with a sharp instrument, according to the sheriff's department, he had a sharp instrument and he cut a woman's head off in her front lawn while neighbors stood around and watched. And then later told the News Channel 5 Bay Area they saw the whole thing. It was shocking. Really? Was it shocking? Was it shocking? Oh, He's where are we at? Three. What's the, that? The beheading guy, Solano, was 33. 33. Yeah. We are at 58 minutes. Convicted of raping a minor. Why is he not in jail? Because you just can't put people in jail, Paul. That doesn't solve anything. It doesn't fix the problem. Well, what does? Bullets. Mm, yeah, bullets. Well placed bullets. Uh, to be, uh, I haven't seen anything other than that one mention of him being an illegal immigrant. Mm. I haven't seen anything else. Well, it's not like they're going to promote it because it makes him look bad, right? Mm. Yeah, but somebody. I mean, you think that one of these news stories? Yeah. So now. It, the the legal beagles out in the audience are going to say uh, she actually violated the restraining order herself by engaging in contact with this dude. One of the one of the restraining order things says that you're not allowed to deliberately contact them, right? So by Snapchatting with this guy, that's just so L. That's just so LCD. It's just so LCD. It's like, ugh. Ah, but the good news is that Mr. Solano is going to be in jail for a little while. He won't stay there. It's California. He'll go to jail eventually, and then eventually the people of California will forget about him, and then eventually some Democrat will parole him and let him back out. Heck, if he has a, quote, history of mental illness, he might not even go to prison. He might get a good California lawyer that will convince a California jury that he was out of his mind and he needs mental help. You see, it's, it's, it's the fault of society for not providing him with mental health care. It's society's fault, actually, that this happened. And if society cared more, hey, there's Carlos Santana. I hope he's doing all right, man. What? Right there. You scrolled by him. Remember he got sick 
and he couldn't perform after he was here in Salt Lake. That's right. I hope he's doing all right. Oh, Mariah Carey's doing a master class. What do you suppose her master class is? Uh, how to cash in on one song. <laughs> oh, the Mariah Carey master class. You could pay them what nine ninety nine or eight nine or twenty five ninety nine or well, how is it? How much is it to take a master class? Depends on the class. That's true. Oh, she was an amazing girl, said Castro. She was an amazing woman. Determined to raise her daughters on her own. Yep. Oh, what in the world is that? I think that's her parents. Wow. Not photogenic. Happens that way sometimes. Yep. So anything else we need to talk about? What's going what else is going on? What's going on in the Discord? Any questions, comments, concerns? Uh well Nick just has a very simple question, which is why is he still in the country if he's an illegal immigrant and has such a bad rap sheet? <laughs> it's California. Remember the guy who quote found a gun and shot it and killed a woman in San Francisco? I do, because we talked about it. He, quote, found a gun, fired the gun, killed a woman, and we found out, oh, he's an illegal invader. He's actually been in and out of the system. And they're like, well, he didn't mean to kill her, and he found the gun, so I guess no harm, no foul. Yep. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That is where we're at right now. If you live, it, all you need to know, the, the takeaway from this story is in California, citizens are disposable. Actual American citizens are disposable, and illegal invaders have more rights than citizens do in California. That is the takeaway, because as a citizen, you're not allowed to carry a gun, to have one, without special blessing from his majesty, the king. But if you're an illegal invader, you can, quote, find a gun and kill a citizen of California and get away with it. That didn't happen. Yes, it did. We reported on it in great detail through this microphone. And what you might be asking is, well, yeah, that happened years ago, but they fixed the problem in California. <laughs> That's what they did. They fixed the problem. Oh, uh, you know, what's funny, Jared, is most people in California probably are not aware of this story because they don't have enough electricity to run their televisions. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you like those rolling blackouts? Everyone should buy an electric car. Yeah, but we don't have enough electricity to keep the lights on. But we're supposed to drive electric cars? How do Farfignugan does that work? Well, well, what we'll do is we'll just do magic. I guess Gavin Newsom and the other criminals in Sacramento are just going to do some magic, and they're going to magic up some electricity. <laughs> Did you see the, the news this weekend? It said, it said, just to point out, it's hotter in Florida than it is in California, but they have electricity. Mm. They're running the AC full power in Florida uh, with no problem but not in California. I thought we lived in California because it was so nice, because the weather is so pleasant. Isn't that why some of our friends won't leave California? Yeah, but it's so nice here. The weather's so nice. Well, it's cool for you to be a comfortable slave. Cool. Oh, 
So no questions? I mean, we have a question from Nick, and the, the obvious question is, is California, and they're yeah. not going to do anything. We got a couple people typing right now. We'll see if they have anything witty and interesting to say, and, uh, or ask, rather. Oh, man. Bada, bada, boom. Bada, bada, boom. Bada, bing. Bada, boom. Bada, bing, bada, boom, bada, boom, bada, bing, bada, boom. I actually... Tell let me. Let me see. I, I stuck a, a note somewhere you do to that? remind myself. Yeah. All right. No questions at the moment. Oh, haha. this is just this is kind of a this is a fun one. Uh, I didn't throw it in the show notes, but I, since we're talking about not having any energy, <laughs> here's a fun one. So the socialists in Europe, and that's what they are. They're socialist scum. Uh, the socialist scum in Europe. The European Union questions Russian oil price gap, considers making fossil fuel companies pay a solidarity contribution. <laughs> are they trying to sabotage themselves? They are. It's like, so the problem is that in Europe, they're running out of energy. So their solution is 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 government extortion because as we know government extortion of private companies always works out well like oh well you know they need the money so that they can pay to get the energy produced so that their <laughs> their constituents can be comfortable <laughs> who's producing the the government's producing the energy no they're taking the money from the private company so that they can pay the people to get the energy produced. Didn't you know that? <laughs> Duh. Oh, man. Socialists are evil. So, oh, and as a just as another story, I also this morning saw a uh, thing says uh, Switzerland is going to impose strict fines and potential jail time. Yes. Switzer, come on, fingers, Erlandy, for 66 degrees. If you are caught setting your thermostat higher than 66 degrees, you can be arrested, fined, and potentially jailed under a new statute in Switzerland because they don't... <laughs> No, they ain't got no gas there. They got mountains and they got snow. Oh, man. Switzerland thermostat law. Here we go. Five days ago, Switzerland is considering jailing those who heat rooms to greater than 19 degrees Celsius for up to three years. If the country is forced to ration gas due to the Ukraine war. <laughs> oh, man. Don't they know that all you have to do is fine, is extort money from the, from the, the, uh, the fossil fuel producers? Please drop a link in the show notes, please. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe that's what California should do, Jared. Actually, they're already doing that. California is already punishing energy producers. That's why the energy uh, in California doesn't come from California. Yes, because because they punish people who produce energy. For that'll show them those evil energy producing fossil fuel companies. We're gonna punish them. Yeah, that'll learn them. That'll learn them. <laughs> oh. I don't. I just. It's the year 2022. What? And we can't figure out on planet Earth how to produce enough food and energy to keep people warm and fed. You know what does that? Socialism. That's what happens when you have socialism. How do they know if your water is going to be heated more than 140 degrees? Fahrenheit? Or your home. Yeah. And your water could not be heated more than 60 degrees centigrade, 140 Fahrenheit. How do they know what, what your water 
is being heated too. Maybe they maybe they force people in uh, to have smart thermostats by the consumption. Maybe. Yeah, uh, I, I assume it's probably the kind of thing where it's like every house in Switzerland built after 2008 has a smart stat in it, mm-hmm. and they can just like or th- smart thermostat in it, and so like they can just check the history. Because you're a socialist when you're in the socialist country. Well, Switzerland's not socialist. They're free. Um, I beg to differ. In free countries, they don't fine you for heating your house. Yeah. Maybe with the water thing, they mean like water heaters. I'm know. sure that's what they mean. I'm sure they don't mean like tea and coffee. Yeah, water. They mean heater, like, your like your water, water heater, heater in your house. Yeah, your water yeah, heater. Just to say that out loud and clarify. Yeah. yeah. 140 is pretty high. It's pretty hot anyway. Yeah. But- but I like hot water, dang it. Well, I don't care what you like. It's for the greater good. Radiant heaters would be banned. And saunas and swimming pools would have to be cold. <laughs> I mean, a cold swimming pool What's is the point of a, of a sauna? I know, yeah. You know a sauna's supposed to be hot. That's how they work, right? Oh. Uh, uh, oh, man. A cold swimming pool. Remember in 4-H camp when we would do the polar bear swim? Yeah. I always That's because it was that. cold in the morning. Yeah, and the I sun always, came out and heated I it. I enjoyed that. Oh, uh, it wasn't that cold though. <laughs> it the was water was cold warm. sometimes. The air was colder than the water. Yeah. What is that lady doing something to that guy? I don't know what's going on. Are they? What the? I'm is gonna, is that dude an NYPD officer? Man. I don't even get know. That off my f- get that out of like here. All right, so kids, socialism is evil. That is the lesson. Uh, California is run by socialists. That's why you don't have any electricity. That's why illegal invaders are murdering your citizens in the street in the middle of the day. In the middle, and while the neighbors watch. Aren't you glad to be living in the world in which you're living right now? Aren't you glad? And California people, the rest of the country's full. Stay there and fix your country. We don't, we don't need you. In the rest of our country you stay there you made your bed now lay in it all right tomorrow when kangaroos attack yes I'm not kidding we have a kangaroo invasion story we have a leadership lesson and we have a fighting fitness for you tomorrow uh on the bonus hour bonus hour number one and uh we may or may not have a go team moment, depending on if we get approval. But, uh, yeah, you guys want to be a member of the grad program. You want to be there on Thursday. You want to get the goodness, the bonus goodness. How do they do that, Jared? How do they do that? Super easy. Join us. Go to getsotg.com. That's getsotg.com. I'm going there right now. It says ready to be a party of, I'm sorry, ready to party. Ready to party! Ready to be a part of a community of like-minded individuals. You can party, too. There's a video here of uh, actual members and what they've said about the program. There's some more information on the page. You get down there, and it says there's a Join Now button. You click that button. Choose the undergrad level, which is the most popular. Get a $1 trial for 30 days. And so it's it's not that much of an investment. It's just enough to mean that you've got a little bit invested in it, and uh, you're going to take the 30 days seriously to... Give it a fair try. Yeah, that's right. The join now button and uh, sign up there. Yes, indeed you do. So when kangaroos attack, we'll be back tomorrow on oh, Thursday. When kangaroos attack, we'll kangaroos be back. Kangaroos attack. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Until we're together again, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, pay attention to everything it is we say and everything it is that we do. Because it's critically important. Until then, remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, 
iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links, and remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.